So hi guys, uh, we're back again. This is the next day for me. Um, we're gonna keep going with the rifle here. So what we have, well, we, where we left off anyway, we had the the metal parts. I mean, there's still some other metal parts to do, but the main metal parts, the receiver and the rail, um, sort of started. Again, this is uh, just preliminary, laying it out, we chipped away a little bit at some of the metal to show some of the metal underneath. Um, so what I want to do now is sort of switch gears and move on to the um, the stock here. Okay, so what I have in mind here, if we look at examples, is this what they call flat dark earth color. It's like a tan color, sort of deserty. Uh, camo color for for the for the rifles um just looking up how people set up their rifles i found a lot of people like this fde color and actually kinda, i kind of like it myself so i figured i'd go ahead and, and do that i, I don't really want to have an all black rifle like that i want to sort of break it up with the fde a little bit um and obviously there's lots of variations some people will completely um have the whole gun be painted this color so you can see what the receiver said here or this one right here um, I didn't want to go that far with it I want I like the sort of contrast between the the tan and the black um, so there's different ways that we could have gone about it here the rail is is uh, flat dark earth along with the upper receiver um, but the way I'm going to do it is just have the the uh, furniture the the stock and the pistol grip and then also this little trigger guard piece right here I'm going to have that be flat dark earth and then later on, I think I'll do this suppressor the same color. So that's the plan. Um, then the other thing, you know, try to figure out what that color. Um, where'd it go? I'm trying to figure out what, what the actual color values are for the um, flat dark earth. It's hard to do by sampling images because the lighting is going to affect that uh, those color values. So I actually had to look it up. And actually found that um, these are the RGB values. They tell they give it to you in the different uh, uh, color spaces here. So this is pretty close to what we want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in these values. So let's go ahead, and I'm on the the texture set here for the stock. So. I deleted that default layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a fill layer. Okay, we're going to make a new fill layer. And then right here in the, can I move this up? So to make sure you guys can see that. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to plug in right down that bottom right of your screen here. I'm going to plug in the RGB values. So what are we looking at here? Or actually I might use the HSL values. I hate that this is way over here. Let me... Shrink it down a little bit just so you can see it better. So right in here, there we go. That, that'll that be visible. So I'm gonna use the HSV value here. So, or HSL, I guess. So what we're looking for is 0.11 and 0 0.3 and 0.41. And that'll give us, theoretically, the correct color. Now, again, it's going to be, you know, how it looks is going to be determined by what your HDR lighting situ uh, solution is. So that kind of looks like the color. Seems a little on the light side. But what I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to look right in here under materials. We have a, so yeah, under materials, we have a, a plastic graining right here. So actually, I'm going to start with that. Let's go ahead and just drag that in here. Okay, and the reason I'm going to use the plastic graining, I'm going to delete that fill there, is because it comes with some texture. Obviously, the texture is too big as it is. Um, so what I've got to do is just shrink this down. So inside of the plastic graining, I'm going to come down to my scale, and I'm going to increase this, right? We need it to be just... Just a, a sort of roughened surface. So I don't know what'll work here. Let's try 10. 
you know, I kind of like what's happening there. Sort of breaks up the specularity of it. Um, maybe pump the roughness up just a hair so it's not as shiny. Okay, and then here now in the colors where we can put in those, those values. So again, let's go 0 0.11, 0 0.3, and point, 0.41. There we go. For some reason, that looks a lot better. Okay, that looks a little darker, a little nicer. Um, if the noise is a little too heavy, we can simply... Um, let's see, do we have anything under here? Here we go. Normal intensity, what does that do? Yeah, normal intensity will drop that down a little bit for you. So if, it, if it's feeling a little too heavy for you, just um, drop the intensity. Let's see if I go down to 0.4. So something like that. Just gives it a little texture. So it's not just this perfectly smooth surface. And I think I like that. Okay, now the problem now is that not all of these parts here are going to be this plastic. This little ring inside here, that is a, um, what do they call it, a quick detach um, sling connection point, and those are metal. Um, this little cylinder right here is made out of black plastic, just from looking at my reference. So what I'm going to do is then exclude these from that plastic. So the way that we do that is we need to add a mask to our plastic greenie. So I'm gonna add a white mask, okay? And then what I can do is just hit four, which again is this, bu this uh, button right here, and I'm going to set this to zero. So if it's at one, it's going to apply this to whatever I click on. If it's at zero, it's gonna remove it. So I'm gonna select mesh fill, Click on there, and it's going to do it by mesh. You could do it by triangle, by polygon, by mesh, or by UV chunk. Okay, I'm just going to do by mesh here. So if I click on this, you'll see that it's it's gone back to that default white because I have excluded it from the plastic. And then I'm going to do the same here. Let's see, do I need to do the same on the other side? No, it looks like it went. It got them both. Okay, so that is how we do that. All right, so that's what we have now that's, that has its the correct texture. I'm going to hit one to get out of there. And let's go to, let's go back to the thing here. So that is our color. Again, I'm just laying in the color. I'm not really making it all dirty and, and whatnot just yet. Just want to lay in the color. So I'm just going to copy this layer. And I'm going to control shift and right click on this little, this is the, they call it a friction lock, I guess. Um, so that we want to apply this there as well. So I can delete this default one and just paste this layer in here. And why didn't it go? Let's try that. Okay. Oh, I got it. Let's get rid of this. Let's clear this mask. And for some reason... Why aren't you working? Let's get rid of the mask completely. There we go. Okay. So it's weird. Shouldn't have done that, but okay. Um, and again, you know, I have, this is metal. This is metal. This is metal. That shouldn't be the plastic. Really, the only thing that should be the plastic is this guy here. So again, if I just, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a black mask this time, which is going to completely remove it. And this time, instead of telling you what stuff not, to put the plastic on, I'm going to tell it what to put the plastic on. So I'm going to hit four again. And this time I'm going to hit X. You see if I hit X, now it's at one. If I hit X again, it goes down to, to zero. So I'm going to hit X. And then I'm going to make sure that I have this selected. I'm going to click on that. And now it's applied it there. Okay, so that is what we have. I hit one or get out of there. So now we have that looking like that. Okay. 
Uh, next thing we got to do is our, what do we call this? Shoulder pad, I guess. Butt pad of the, of the uh, rifle here. That's a black rubber, so control shift and right click on it so that it goes to the correct. Oh, okay. We already were in the correct one here. So I'm going to, let's, let's look for a black rubber if they have one in here. Uh, let's see, silicone, hmm. that might work, all right, let's try the silicone, so I'm going to put the silicone right here, and I don't know if I like that. not really the uh, the texture that I want so actually what I can do let's delete that silicone um, see what else is available here da, 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 okay we got plastic no rubber okay so I mean rubber is not that hard to uh, create if we wanted to have some kind of texture we can use that grainy plastic again so, you know, let me rename this just so it's uh, easy to tell them apart. So this is FDE for Flat Dark Earth. And we're going to put the plastic grainy on here. Again, we're going to come up here and increase our scale. This time I'm going to increase it probably quite a bit more, maybe 20. Because this is going to be a much finer noise. And I might actually just come down to technical parameters and really drop that down. I want it to be there, but to be much more subtle. Okay, and then we got to increase our roughness because the rubber tends to not be very shiny. Okay, let's see the color is not quite black, but we want to maybe darken it just a hair more. And of course, everything else has taken that on. So again, we're going to use a black mask. I'm going to hit four. And I'm going to, with this set to one, I'm going to click on the butt pad here. And that'll fill that in, but leave everything else. So we'll call this, I don't know, butt pad. Or oh, actually, we'll just call this rubber pad. Yeah, something like that. Okay, whatever works. All right. And let's get out of there. So... This is what we have here. Now, before I start to tackle the metal parts and whatnot, I want to put some of that uh, FDE on the pistol grip here and on the um, trigger guard just so we can get that looking good. So again, I'm just going to copy this layer. Copy layer, control shift, right click on that pistol grip, which is this. Check, in fact, both of those are on there. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and just paste this in here let's get rid of the default layer paste clear uh, just delete the mask or remove mask okay now what you'll notice is that the inside of the magwell is on that same uv set there so we need to remove that from there so let's go at a white mask and that tool is still active make sure we're at zero and we're going to just click on sometimes it's hard to there we go sometimes it's hard to click on it properly okay so if I hit F1 I can see what's what's on here and I only want matter of fact you know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm gonna clear this mask and actually I'm gonna set it to a black mask instead of a um, white mask and then I could use this tool set to one to click on this and the, the uh, trigger guard and then everything else these are all metal parts i'm going to leave those out okay that might be the easier way to make sure you get the correct things in there okay so there we go that's looking pretty good Okay, now let's do the um, 
little panels here. Let's see what else is on here. So this is all just UVs from the panels and nothing else. So that's convenient. Let's delete the default layer and just paste that layer again. And let's get rid of our mask here. And now those have all been given. I'm going to go to F2 to full screen my 3D view here. So now we have our FDE on uh, those rail covers. Okay, so that is coming along pretty nicely. All right. So I just noticed that for some reason, I am missing my charging handle. So I gotta go figure out where that is. I might have to re-import. And you can do that. You can re-import even after you've started. It's just going to reapply the textures uh, where you have them. So I will go investigate this and then I will be back. All right, so. I fixed my issue with the uh, charging handle here. All I did was selected that with everything else and just re-exported a new OBJ. And then you just come under Edit, Project Configuration. You select the new mesh. And then making sure again that this is turned on, create a texture set per UDIM tile. And then everything else I left and then hit OK. And it's going to bring it in updated um with this new piece of geometry and the textures reapplied to the new uh, mesh okay so pretty straightforward so while we're here might as well um start laying out the textures for the charging handle uh so i'm going to control shift and click so that's yeah we're on the right one here so i want that fde on here as well now so if I go in my uh, mask and let's hit four, make sure that we are at one here and we have mesh. Uh, what is it? Mesh, mesh fill. That's what it is. We're going to click on. Now, sometimes you got to click it a certain way. There we go. See, that one clicked everything, so i got to make sure I just get the parts that I want. So the way, the way I'm going to do this is the sort of these latches here are going to be the same color as the stock here. And then the metal part here, so let me, let me hide everything here so we can see this better. Okay, so the way a charging handle is, is that it's got this long piece right here, and that's going to be the metal. So what I'm going to do is go to, here we go, we'll, you, we'll just take the metal from the lower receiver, which is in right here. And I'm just going to copy this entire layer, bring it into this one, and paste it. Okay, so that's our gun metal. Now, obviously, it's just gone and put itself on everything. So what I'm going to do here is put a black mask on there. And click on here. And again, we want to be, you know, hit four to get into this mode. And we're going to select the charging handle. Well, the metal part of the charging handle, I should say. And then I got these little screws in here. So let's, let's just throw those in just to make life easy there. Okay, so it's only gonna apply it to the parts we've just selected. Of course, this mask over here um, is now invalid. So I'm gonna hit one to get out of that mode. So if I, let's see, I don't need this paint layer. And Let's see here. This paint layer right here, I don't think I need either, so I'm going to get rid of that. 
So I got my metal edge wear, which is not really showing up very well here. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and just delete both of these and put a new generator. And let's do a metal edge wear from the list and invert it. And for some reason, oh, you know what it is. I know what it is. So because I um, re-imported the Besh with this new piece of geometry in there, this new piece of geometry never got its uh, sh uh, shaders baked or material or, or maps baked, I should say. So what I'm going to do is go here to bake mesh maps, uncheck ID 4K. And I just want to bake the mesh maps for uh, 1013, 1013. So I'm just going to do that. The other ones are fine. They don't need to be changed. So I'm just going to bake the mesh maps for that guy. And again, it's going to take a little bit of a while here. But because it's only doing one, it's not going to be near as long as it was the first time. Okay, so it's one of those things I, I tend to forget. Uh, anytime you bring geometry in, especially new geometry, you want to bake those mesh maps so that it can set that up for you. And we should be almost done here. And yep, there we go. Okay, so now we can see that our metal edge wear is working. Okay, now we're not getting much down that way, but that's actually, let's see. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, this is actually never going to be used. So really the important part is the part that's going to be visible, which is back here. So I'm actually okay with this. I just need, we just need to tone this down here. This is a little too heavy. Um, so let's drop our wear level a little bit. Let's increase our grunge, grunge amount. Okay, so you can just play with those. See what use tri planer does. Nah, I don't really like that. Okay, so let's say where would I put my pen here? Okay, let's say that's fine. But what we want to do again, just like we did before, is to add a paint layer to this, and now we can. Pick a brush, and again, I like to use one of these dirt brushes. I'm going to shrink it down, and let's hit X to invert that. I want to fill back in some of this. I'm going to I'm going to turn up my flow here just to to speed things up a little bit. Don't really need to need it to be this worn away. And again, the stuff we're going to see is like over here anyway, so. This is kind of the important part. Okay. So something like that. Again, all this stuff that's going to be out of view, I don't want to waste too much time on. Do a little bit here. Okay. Now let's see how that looks with everything brought back. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, so very minor part, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So let's let's move on. Um, what do we want to do next? You know, I got the barrel visible here, so might as well just get on that. So I'm going to control shift and right click on that barrel to get us into the texture set for it, which is a thousand and five. And what I need here is a 
well let's go to materials and see what kind of material we want to start with or if we want to just make our own um, barrels are generally made out of steel so steel rough I, I don't know I don't know if steel rough is gonna work on the barrel but let's see see it's just it's too shiny so let's maybe increase our roughness a little bit uh, actually you know what let's just I guess we can do just like we've been doing uh, and then I'll, you know we got this this um, muzzle device here the flash hider so I guess we'll do like we'll have we'll have an underlying steel rough and then we'll, on top of that we can put some metal now I don't think I want to use the same um, steel rust and wear that I used before maybe I want it to be a slightly different uh, piece of metal so what I can do is just make a new fill layer and decide what color I want that metal to be so I want it to be a darkish gray maybe not as dark as the rest of this um, I'll, it's obviously going to be a metal so I need to turn my metallic all the way on okay and notice that it's getting some of that normal map detail some of the bump detail from the steel beneath it so if I turn off the steel even though it's completely covered you can see that it does have an effect so whatever is beneath you if it's got normal detail that's any kind of displacement any height map detail that's going to transfer through so if that's not what you want that you you, you got to be aware of that it is actually what I want in this case so I'm going to leave that um so still in our fill layer here um I don't know what kind of metal we'll call this parkerized to spell that right steel okay so parkerized steel does not have a lot of shine to it so I'm going to increase the roughness here um what else do I want to do here? Let's go ahead and put that um, black mask on there. Let's get our generator. And we're just going to, like, just like before, we'll do a metal edge wear, then invert it. So we're going to get some wearing away. Now it's, it's, it's extreme over here and not much going on, but this is okay. Um, this is a little much here, so I'm going to decrease this. Now, I actually maybe want to make this flash hider out of a different metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take, take these, just select those two and, and group them into a single folder. And then I'm going to call this barrel steel and I'm going to put a white mask on it and I want to exclude my muzzle device here so what I'm going to do is hit 4 mesh fill selected set this to 0 and click on the muzzle device and that will completely remove that steel from it okay we're going to make a different metal for that all right, so now we can go back here and go in our metal edge wear and just start playing a little bit with this. Let's increase our grunge amount. It's not really getting much going on there, which is weird. It's, it's all happening right at the edges. There we go. Now we're starting to get a little bit more. So I just, you know, Maybe that's a little much for a barrel that is protected. So, because we have our um, our rail surrounding the barrel. So that's going to protect the barrel from a lot of wear. So this is kind of insane. Um, maybe just turn it down a little bit. 
So, and again, because the barrel, now this stuff over here actually is not, is not bad because this is exposed in the front there. So maybe it does get damaged. Um, I'm going to select the parkerized steel. Let's give it a little bit of height so that it has some dimension to it. But we just want a little bit. I don't know if that's made much of a difference. Let's try 0.05. Okay, that's ridiculous. Wait, what did I do? No, I said 0.05. There we go. So there's a little bit there. I feel like that's too much. So let's do 0.025. Okay. It's very subtle. Okay, so... I don't know. I feel like for this piece here, that might be enough. We'll see as we go. Let me bring back my rail here. So as you can see, the barrel is like hidden back there. And you can see it. So, you know, all this wearing away here is actually not bad. And then at the front here is where it's got the most happening. Okay, so for now I'm going to leave it as it is. And again, as I as we continue, I'll probably be back to try to change it. But right now I'm going to leave it as is uh, and let that marinate for a bit. <clears throat> the flash hider itself. So I'm going to make a new group. Make sure that is on the outside of that other one. So we're going to call this flash hider. And inside of there, again, I'm going to have steel rough as my base. So that's the underline. Now, again, I, I, I use steel rough a lot. It, it's very convenient, very easy. Um, it's up to you. Maybe you want to make your own, you know, underlying metal. But this is so convenient, especially when you're just peeling away little little bits here and there. You're not peeling away a lot of it. I think it works fine. Uh, so I'll use that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mask on my folder. So I'm going to do a black mask. So it's going to remove everything. Then I'm going to make sure this is set to 1. And I'm going to click on that flash hider. So that now the flash hider just has the steel and then above the steel um we can use really whatever you want let's let's try the steel rust again but this time but i'm gonna actually like i did the other and the other one i'm going to where is the uh, rust intensity i'm just gonna turn that off i don't want any rust on it and then metal color, I want to just darken that quite a bit. Okay, uh, let's see, dirt intensity, maybe not so much. Let's tone that down. Let's see what we're doing here. Surface imperfections, so you can have, no, so yeah, I don't think I like that though. So I'm going to just turn that way down. And then the roughness, you know, you can, you know, obviously don't want to be too shiny. But I don't want a lot of shine on there. Maybe it's too much, but let's drop that down a little bit. Okay, so eventually what I'm going to do, and maybe this is too dark. What I'm going to do eventually, so as this thing gets fired a lot, especially if it's fired inside of a suppressor, um, you get a lot of soot car uh, carbon buildup on it. So I'm going to layer that on later. But right now I'm going to put a black mask on here and then add my generator. So this is a pretty standard thing here. Generator, put a little metal edge wear. Then we're going to invert it, and obviously, again, this is way too much. So we're going to, you know, reduce this. 
and let's see, let's mess with our grunge a little bit. Let's because the flash hider is out there, it is prone to bumping into stuff and getting scratched up. So I do want quite a bit of damage here, but again, if you look at it, it's just way too even, and, and uh, we need to work on that a little bit. Wear contrast. You know, something like that. So, again, I'm going to add a paint layer. And my flow's at 99, so I can... Oh, hit x to invert this i can start to put stuff back in here especially around this section right here going around here that's just way too much so i'm going to just put back most of this okay the front of it because, you know, people lean their guns up against stuff where they're resting on the muzzle device. Um, they, they, when, they, when they squat down, the muzzle goes in the dirt, you know, or on, on concrete or whatever it is. So it, it kind of makes sense that this would be pretty scratched up in here. But over here, probably not because this nothing can really get in there to scratch that up. Um, and over here too, it's just it's just way too much. So we just need to tone it down. Same thing over here. Let's just bring this down. This is crazy. Okay, the metal edge wear is very useful. It's one of my favorite things about substance. But but if you abuse it, it's gonna be very obvious what you did. So you want to you want to be very careful with it. You want to use it but use it intelligently, I guess. Don't just slap it on and call it good. You want to use it where it makes sense. It's a very nice way to 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 texture because otherwise you got to paint that stuff yourself. And it's doable, but this just the procedural workflow is really nice in substance. So I'm going to clean this one up here. Okay. And now you can you can drop your flow down and you just cover some parts up, but it won't just completely wash it, you know, wash it out. It'll put it back slowly, so you have to go over it multiple times to completely cover it up. So that's one I use a lot. Um, let's see here. So in the steel steel rust and wear here, what I'm gonna do is um see what happens if I increase the and actually you know what I don't maybe I don't need to do that let's okay let me just continue here okay over here oh, let's go back in our paint layer And let's put some of this back. And auto save is saving. Got to be real careful with the auto saves in substance because what it does is and for me i think i've only seen it create two files but it, if if you don't save in a while it's going to save for you in a new file and then it might make a second one if you if you continue to not save um which is actually a good feature obviously be, you know you don't want to lose your stuff if the computer crashes but 
like I said before, this file is six gigs in size. So if it makes two more of them, that's that's two more six gig files. So before you know it, you got you got all kinds of, you know, huge files on your computer and you're running out of space and, and don't know why. So it's good that it does that. But I use that as just a reminder to save my work. And then I save the my working file and then I go into my uh, into Windows and delete those auto save files because I don't need 18 gigs where it's just three duplicates of the same file. Um, so just, uh, just bear that in mind. Okay. And you know, the color here, I keep going back and forth. I think I want it a little bit darker. And let's go in here. Clean up some of this stuff. Okay. All right. So for now, let's call that all okay. And Let's, so I'm going to close that. So I got a shader for the barrel, a shader for the flash hider. Um, you know what, let's, let, yeah, let's stay in the flash hider because what I'm going to do now, I just want to happen to the flash hider. So above my steel here, um, I'm going to put a, a fill layer right there. I'm going to make it pretty dark, almost full black. Then... I'm going to increase the roughness because I want this to be pretty matte. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a black mask on it and then put a paint layer. And this is that, that carbon buildup I, I was talking about earlier. So I can start to paint that, especially in here, right in here is where you're going to get a lot of that. Now this, let's, so my roughness is up. Um, I don't need any metallics. I'm just going to turn off metallic here. Okay. Um, so back in the fill, in the, um, well, let's name this here. We'll call this uh, carbon. I think it's carbon. I don't want to call it soot, but it, you know, I think it's a, I think it's carbon buildup is what it is. So let me increase my brush size and start. And uh, actually, before I do that, let's let's go up. Where are we here? Um, oh, here we go. Uh, we want to go in our brush settings and I want, we got angle jitter. Let's do flow jitter as well. We got size jitter turned on position jitter, maybe a little bit. I don't want it to jump around too much. Okay. So, oh, go in the paint layer and start to paint that on here. Okay, so these inside surfaces, that, that flame coming out of the barrel is just coating. Yeah, you know what? I don't like that position here. That, that um, burnt gunpowder that is coming through the barrel is just coating the inside of this flash hider with the carbon. And I'm going to put it all in here. Maybe no flow jitter. Let's just keep it at one level of flow here. And if I hit F1, I can just do this in the UVs again. Sometimes it's easier to do it here. So this is the inside of that flash hider right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just paint this on here. Okay. 
Okay. See how that's looking. Okay. Really get that dark. Okay, now it's kind of hard to, to see. So if I hold on shift and right click and drag. Okay, and then obviously this stuff is going to spill over. Oops. And honestly, if you're, you know, if this is being run with a suppressor on it, um, it tends to just cover the entire flash hider with this uh, carbon. But I don't want to go that far, so I'm going to just sort of fake it. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Something. Something like that. Okay. Okay, so we're just hinting at this stuff sort of bleeding out of the, out and around the prongs of the flash hider. So let's drop my flow a little bit here and just soften that. So by reducing my flow here, I can make you sort of light, give a lighter coat here. And I can darken it by simply going over it multiple times. So what I like is how the metal here is shinier than where it's, where the soot is. So that looks pretty good. Okay, now you can take the time to get it looking real good. For now, I'm going to call this OK. Let's really get that all sooty. All right. Okay, so. That just hints at <clears throat> the fact that this has been used. Now, I want to do the inside of the bore here. So I got to remember where that piece is. And if I paint on here, there it is. So it's this guy right here, I think. Maybe. Hmm, that didn't seem to do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe this one? There it is. Okay. So obviously that's going to be covered in the same soot. 
and I need to do that down the barrel too. So what I'm going to do is go back to the mask for the carbon. And this time, and I hit four, I'm going to do a UV chunk fill for the inside of the barrel. So if I, let's see if we can zoom in here. Come on. This, oh, you know what? I need to, no, that's right. It's at one. So I don't know. Let me, let me look up the inside of my barrel here. Because it's not letting me click. Hmm. That is weird. Okay. Um, I'm doing something wrong here. Let's try it in the UV. I think, I think this is the inside of the barrel. Uh, I guess a quick way to find out is just go here into Maya and go down the barrel, select it. Select the, select the face on there. And okay, I guess this big one here is the inside of the barrel. So I'm going to then, so that'd be this guy here. So oh, I guess I can do it in the paint layer. That's probably what it wants me to do. Maybe. Let's do a UV chunk fill here. Oh, you know what it is, is because I excluded the barrel in the group. So you got to be careful with your mass. And I, I fall for this a lot. Um, because the barrel was not included in the mask for the group, I can't add it to something inside of the group. I need to include it in the group mask. So I'm going to click here. And now it should maybe, there we go. Okay, so that's, that is now dark in the inside of the barrel. Now, what I got to be careful of, I think it got the outs. Yeah, I just want the inside. So I want a UV chunk fill. So if I make sure, sometimes this thing is not very, there we go. Now I got the inside, but not the outside. Okay, so now that is covered in soot. Now my paint layer, I think I messed up my paint layer. Yeah, I did. So let's go back. Let's keep on doing, here we go. Now we're back here. Now I go to my mask here and select that. Yeah, now we're, we're good. Now the inside is darkened. Um, I think I want to do that. I don't know. I might, uh, I want, I'm going to put uh, rifling in there eventually. I'm not going to do it right now. Um, so I'm not sure if I need, if I want it to be that dark, but for right now, I'll just leave it, leave it like that. And let's see what we got. Okay, so we got that soot. Uh, again, you know, this color just seems a little dark. Maybe I'll brighten it up just a hair. Something like that. Okay. All right. So for now, that'll work. Again, I'll probably be back to it messing, <clears throat> messing around with it. But I just wanted to lay that in there. So how about we work on the safety selectors? So control shift, right click on the safety selector and it's in this, this one right here with a whole bunch of other stuff. Now these, I'm gonna delete this layer. These safety selectors, the little screw in the middle is gonna be metal. And then the outer part is gonna be metal but it's gonna be metal that's kind of colored the same as our FDE here. So we're just going for a certain color scheme. Um, now, I don't know if it's painted metal or if it's anodized metal. 
I guess we can decide as we go. So for the metal part, which I think I'm going to use the same metal for our uh, bolt release here, and also the um, probably yeah probably the trigger too, and the backside of the magazine release here. The magazine release is also going to be metal. So I think we'll use the same metal. Just make our lives a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and, you know, let's try the steel painted. So I'm going to put steel painted. Okay, so it's just a black painted metal. Yeah, which I think will work. Um, I need to put ridges going across here because it's, it's got some uh, texturing on there. Um, but right now... It's a little on the blue side when compared to the rest of the receiver here. So, as you can see, it is a pretty blue color. So, if I just drag this over this way. It's still got some blue in it, but it's not nearly as bad. And I like that it, there's a slight difference there. Um... Okay, so now I need to exclude the outer part of the safety selector. So, um, let me see here. What I'm going to do, let's put this in a group. That way we can just mask the group here and then put a black mask. Actually, no, let's make that a white mask. And then hit four, set this to zero, mesh. And what we want to do is click on that to deselect it, which we did on both sides. And then that should be good. Okay. Um, we'll just call this metal parts. Now, what I want to check is just make sure that what else is on this? Ah, okay, so I have my my sights up here too, and those don't need to be this color, so I'm actually going to exclude those as well. So come over here and just drag a selection around all this stuff here. Might actually leave this uh, screw here. Matter of fact, let's. Come on. Hate how sometimes it won't select. Oh, it's because I have it on one. I mean, on zero. So actually, these parts are a dark oops, metal. Uh, the aperture here, I'm going to leave this. Yeah, it's going to take the whole thing. Let's try UV chunk. No. Actually, why not? There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> those parts are okay. I'm okay being a black metal color. Let's come to this guy here. I'm going to set this to zero. That's deselect you, deselect you, and you, you. Oh, I did get that. Um, what I should be doing is that there we go okay so i think that's all there what else is on this there's a lot of stuff on this uv um the dust cover which might actually be okay to leave as that metal but my spring here i don't think i want on there so let's click on our spring get rid of that um, because that's going to be a more, so, you know, that, um, steel rough will probably be fine for that. Kind of like almost a chrome spring. What else is on this? Well, let's go ahead and just hide everything else. So you can just click and drag on these just like you can in Photoshop. Okay, so... You know, all the internal stuff and then the sights. 
and our dust cover. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, so let's go with that. And then I want steel rough, like I said, for our little spring here. So I'm going to put a black mask, which is going to remove it off everything. Hit four. Make sure we're at one here. And add the spring. And we'll just call this steel spring. And I think I'm just going to... I'm gonna, call that good although maybe it's a little too shiny so increase the roughness a little bit and mat it down and I think I'm I think I'm fine with it with leaving that as is okay um all right so I think that's fine there I'm gonna save my work So, I'm going to show you what I mean here. So, here are the files that I'm saving. Mine is 6.2 gigs. There's the autosave file that, that Substance created on by itself. So, about the same size. So, right now, I got 12 gigs in this folder, and I don't really need 12 gigs in this folder. So... Because I just saved, it's 3 a.m. right now, 3.30 almost. This this autosave was done at 3.05. So it's it's outdated anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Try to reduce uh, how much space I'm using. Okay, now we need to do the flat dark earth for the safety selector here. And... Uh, I'm just going to make a new folder for that just to keep things kind of organized. Although I guess I don't really need to. You know what? Never mind. Um, let's just make a new fill layer. And we're going to mask that black mask. We're going to change our color. And I got to remember the... Let's turn stuff back on here I'm going to select this I got to remember the RGB values here or the HSV uh, 11 30 41 so here I know you guys oh you can you yeah you can see that so 11 30. 41. Okay, did that. Why didn't that go? Oh, because I have a black mask. So now I need to uh, hit select the mask, hit four, make sure it's set to one, and click there. And we're back. So it's a little it's a little light. Um, that might be because this this started out as that as that black or the plastic grainy, so it, it comes in a little bit darker. So all I'm going to do, and it's actually not not bad that it's slightly different because these are all these these parts are manufactured by different people, and the colors never quite match perfectly. But I do think this needs to be darkened a little bit. Or, or let's see, let's increase our saturation. Let's drop our value a little bit, maybe I don't know, and then. This is metal, so let's see what it looks like if we turn on metallic. See if I like that. Or if I want to have it be a painted. Now, you know what? Let's make it metallic. And let's increase our roughness so it's not so shiny. Now you'll notice that I turn metallic all the way up. Usually if something is metal. Usually something's either metal or it's not. And if it is metal, you generally want to turn it on all the way. Um, I believe it's metals and insulators. So 
If it's an insulator, you set it to zero. If it's a metal, you set it to one. Generally, uh, this, there are cases where you'd want to have some value between zero and one. But generally, that's how it goes. And we want to do this side as well. So select that. Okay. So that's fine for now. We're going to come back and do a dirt pass over everything. Just dirty it up a little bit. But for right now, we're just laying in some stuff here. Okay, so we kind of want to do the same thing for the sites, but I don't want metal sites. I want painted sites. So uh, we'll call this safety. Oops. How do you spell safety? Uh, I don't know. Or is it? No, that doesn't look right. Safety. I don't know. I'm <laughs> Whatever. Safety selector. Then we want a new, this time I am going to use a group because I'm going to layer some stuff together. So it's better that I do it in the group. Um, and then inside that group, I want to fill layer. Actually, I want to, I want to steel rough in there, but I want the, oh, did that not go in properly? So let's put this in that folder and put this in, put that above the steel. So the paint layer. So we'll call this FDE paint and then the steel rough. And again, the colors, what was it? 11, 30. It annoys me that you can't use tab to jump between these um, numbers, 41. And again, we're just going to adjust this. And then we got to mask our, our paint here. So we're going to put a black mask on and let's go ahead and select the parts that we do want to be this color. Come on, there we go. Now this piece here, we do not want actually, that's going to be a dark metal. And let's go to the, whoa. We want this, this, not this. And I forgot to make that black, but I'll do that. And that should be black too. Okay, so I think we've got what we need. Just call that FD. Okay, so this is a paint. So we're gonna put a black mask here, add a generator, do a metal edge wear, and invert. Okay, so that's what we're, we're getting. And then also in here, I'm going to add some height. Let's do a 0.025. Okay, just to give that paint some dimension there. Then we can come into the metal edge wear, just decrease that, maybe a grunge amount. Uh, where are we here? There we go. We just we just want a little bit. Right, you're not dragging the gun around on the sights, but there might be some damage. So that's actually not too bad, but as with anything, I am going to just throw a paint layer on there. And I hit one to get out of this mode. And see, and it's, you know, start to fill it. Now the corners like this, I might actually want to wear away, you know, just like that. That's generally where the wearing away happens is at these tight corners. 
And then I can hit X to invert. Start to put some of this back. And hit X again, and again, just sort of beat up this corner, maybe. Oops. Okay. So I just go back and forth with X. Okay. Fill some of this back. So this, this black thing here is the button that you use. You, you got to press that down to flip the site up. So eventually I'm going to have, you know, some dirt around there from the fingerprints as you do that. You know, you got to think about how the thing's being used. That's going to inform how you texture it. Okay, just chipping away at it. Let's really beat up this corner here. Okay, and later on I'll do a scratch pass, so I'm going to scratch it up a little bit more. But for right now, this should be good. So I'll just fill this back in here. Okay. And again, looks a little low resolution. That's because it's a, it's on a 2K map. And if you consider the UV editor here, this is if this was 2K, then this part is probably somewhere here. That's a very small piece of a 2K map. That's why it looks very low res. Um, but on a 4K map, it should be fine. Yeah. Okay, and from a distance, it actually looks pretty good. That metal peeking through there really adds something. Okay, and there's going to be decals on here. You know, this I believe the company that makes this web this um, website I almost said the company that makes this uh, weapon site here is uh, I believe it's Troy Industries. So they there's some text that goes on there. Um, that I, that I want to duplicate and put on there. So we'll do all that later. Uh, let's do this guy up front. So let's 
So, let's fill in some of this. Beat up some of these corners. <clears throat> now these sites for this little project here they're not going to be flipped up at any point so you know i'm not gonna spend too much time here now I'm noticing a lot of faceting here, so maybe it might have been a good idea to bring this stuff in smoothed. Um, we'll see. If 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 that ends up being the case, I can always again I can just re-export the gun out again with these things smoothed, and the textures should be fine. Maybe you just need a little bit of tweaking. What I'm worried about is the normal maps that get created. They may take this faceting into account and, and have it in the normal map. And if that happens, I am going to have to fix that. Okay. Yes, yeah, erase this. <clears throat> Might be a little too much, so I'm going to get rid of some of this. Okay, so for now, let's call that okay. And let's turn everything back on. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we've been going about an hour. I'm thinking this is a good place to stop. It's almost four in the morning for me here. Um, just looking over here and see what else we're going to have to do. Uh, hey, while we're here. So this tube going through here is, is called a gas tube. The way the gun works is as a bullet is fired, the gases behind the bullet get to about this point. There's a hole in the barrel coming upward. And some of that gas bleeds off into that hole and then connects to this tube here. 
and it gets sent back into the receiver, which is what causes the cycle, the, the action to cycle, meaning that it kicks out the spent brass casing. It the, the the bolt carrier of the rifle slides back, and in doing so, uh, the the spent casing is, is ejected, is extracted, then ejected. And then as it comes back forward, it strips around off the magazine and slides it into the chamber. So the gas tube, that's what the gas tube's for. So what we're going to do here, control shift and right click on it. And I'm just going to put my steel rough on there and see how that looks. That may be all I need to do. So let's delete the default, get our steel rough, put it there. It's going to put it on everything. I don't think I want that on the... Uh, it's called a gas block here, and it's 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 an adjustable gas block. I think I just want this. I think that works actually pretty well for the gas tube. So we'll call this we'll call it gas tube, and we'll put a black mask and hit four, and we want to click that. Okay, so now that is like that. Again, I might want to increase my roughness so it's not so shiny. And that's probably going to be good. Don't think I need to do much more than that. Okay. So, back here, I'm just going to... See, I jump around a lot, just that's how my brain works. So what are we, metal parts. I want to include this piece and this piece. Okay. Oh yeah, and I need to include that piece and now I think about it I think I'm going to include this one okay so we're getting somewhere I think this is a good place to call it for today Still quite a lot of work to do, but we are getting somewhere good. Actually, before I do that, let's see, I've got my brain is like more stuff to do. So the inside of my magwell here, I want to have the metal. So I'm going to control click here and I'm going to copy my gun metal. And then con control shift, right click that. So let's see. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, actually, I do have a gunmetal layer in here. So I'm going to go in the mask and we're going to include the. Let's go here. There we go. We're going to include this guy. So now the inside is the same metal. And we've got some wear going on here, which, you know, I'm going to have to tweak that a little bit. It's might be a little bit much down there. But that's been bugging me for a while. I just wanted to get that uh, taken care of. And I think we're off to a good start. So I'm going to save. And so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe so on and so forth hit that little bell and um you know next video we'll move on to something else don't know what i jump around a lot so we'll see when we get there all right so have a good evening day whatever it is where you are and i'll see you next time all right bye